because they don't eat the carcasses of the people that they kill. Now, the killing, of course, is also hypothetical. That hasn't happened. But, no, yeah. Um, Unless they're furries. Furbies. Furbies? Furries? Furries. I don't know if furries have taken any bodies yet, either. Yeah, not, not they yet. They suffocate. All right, take it from the beginning. I mean, you don't recognize some of these. They seem, they seem animalistic is what I mean. Um, in, no, they're the worse than animals. They're worse than animals, because animals, they just kill to eat, you know? Human beings, they have a twist in them that makes them far worse than animals when they really get going. Well, I think it's, I think, you really want to know what I think? I think it's revenge against God for the crime of being. That's really what I think. It's Cain, and Cain, Cain and Abel. It's like, oh, Abel's your, Abel's your guy, eh, God? How about if I take him out in the field and beat him to death? How do you feel about that? All my sacrifices went unrewarded. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> yeah, that's what it is at the bottom of the hell of things. Oh my God. Oh! So there's Tim Tim. And then Mufasa got two dogs. Well, I got, you know, uh, anyways, uh, Tim Tim and Mufasa. Tim Tim doesn't say, hey, you know, will you let me in? Tim Tim growls at Mufasa and is mean to Mufasa. And then Mufasa cries. And then I hear a commotion. And then I'm like, oh, what, y'all want to be let in? And so he's, in, in his mind, maybe he's just, uh, you know, that's how he gets in. But um, I could see the jealousy. I could see, understand the fucking jealousy, right? Because he's a fucking asshole. And it makes me wonder if, like, he's mad about the, was it the crime of being? He says he's mad at God for the crime of being. <clears throat> so is that what Tim is pissed off? He's like, God damn it. I gotta ask this motherfucker to get in. I, I'm not gonna ask him. I'm not gonna ask him. I'm gonna be a dickhead to this one who he treats better sometimes. Maybe not. I don't know. But, uh. But then the cane thing, you know, I, for, um, give me more cane. I don't need Abel. I don't need you to burn and kill innocent lambs. Maybe Cain was just defending the lambs, you know. Maybe Cain was the uh, first vegetarian, just a gung-ho, you know, just a super-duper vegetarian. Motherfucking Abel killed an innocent lamb, so Cain was like, fucking eye for an eye, motherfucker. This is Old Testament shit. Now nah, we're in the Old Testament. <laughs> And it's just dumb. Sacrifice to just burn up an innocent lamb just for some sort of useless religious offering. Fucking dumb. Yet Cain's toils brought forth food for us to eat. Cain, you know, we got food, but Abel's just burnt up into the smoke. What the fuck, God? You picked the wrong side, God. What a fickle bitch. That fickle bitch picked the wrong side. I said, I said, this is indistinguishable from Pat Robertson, right? This is indistinguishable. But I really, what I meant to say no, is, it's indistinguishable from like evangelicals in this country in the way that you know he phrases these things. But honestly, someone pointed out to me it's more like Glenn Beck because he's getting weirdly emotional about yeah. it too and crying out of nowhere. That's what he's. That's he's. This, like, uh, intellectual who's going to change the way young white men uh, approach their lives. It's just basically Glenn Beck, but less emotionally stable. <laughs> yeah. The interesting thing is what sets him off. And it, it seems like what it's the words when he says, like, sacrifices go unrewarded. <laughs> and and on some level, it's it's it, there's some measure of, like, Enormous self pity that is associated oh, there. It's, it's, it's yeah. where a crime Peterson, being. Peterson does not believe that he has been recognized. I mean, it's the same with Beck on some level. Beck has a. Um, uh, <laughs> a wow. For them not being, you know, psychotherapists and psychology majors, they seem to know. They really get into Jordan Peterson's mind there. I, um, my, I don't like the oppressor. 
tell me what to fucking do. I can be my own person. I don't need to be directed and controlled and told what to do. And I also, like Abraham Lincoln, I don't want to control others. I don't want to be controlled. I don't want to control others. In some respects, you're enslaved to those that you oppress. So to be a fascist, to always, you know, do this, do that, to just over, you know, motherfuckers all day long, fuck you. And then for the motherfuckers that will just do whatever a fascist fucking tells them, I just read something about Salem Bean. He said, Salem Bean, he said that uh, Caesar, Julius Caesar, never said, go obey me, do as you're fucking told. He always said, let us go and do the thing. Let us all go. So it was like we were all collectively going to go do the thing. So there's a, a distinction. I mean, God, I have way too much to say about this, but I'm going to say every bit of it because if I'm the slave on the plantation, he don't understand. I could understand why, you know, I'd be, I'd curse God for the crime of being if none of it made any fucking sense, right? Everybody's telling me a bunch of bullshit, but uh, really it sounds like you're saying that uh, I have to stay here and do this white man's bidding and do his fucking shit while he gets every bit of it and I don't get shit. That's what it sounds like you're telling me. It's what it's, it sounds like a bunch of bullshit just to uh, enslave me and steal my labor and control my body. That's all it seems that you're doing. That's unbearable. That's unbearable. And you got to break free from that and you got to be liberated. Without freedom, you can't be authentically human. So just to the uh, at the bare minimum, you have to have freedom just to be an authentic human being. Once you have freedom, then, you know, where do you go from there? There's some, you know, natural elements, uh, uh, economic, there's some limitations to you know, what you can, but to have a motherfucker tell you, you know, I'm the boss of you, you're not shit, you're my slave, like, that's some fucked up shit, now, Jordan Peterson, he, you know, kind of justifies the hierarchy, and I guess he justifies a little bit of fascism, a little bit of hierarchy, a little bit of totalitarian, you know, uh, authoritarian fascism, and, uh, I, I feel like the biggest piece that he's missing I don't like that they equated Antifa with, you know, the looting and all the uh, crimes and shit. But if the idea is just being against fascism is a crime, you know, you, you're mad at God. Oh, you're, you're against fascism? Well, then you must be mad at God for the crime of being. No, I can not be a fascist. There's a such thing as leftist fascism. You got self-defense on one side and you got violence on the other. You got criminal violence on the other. You got self-defense, right? You, sometimes you'll have to arrest a, a fucking criminal and you'll have to defend yourself. But you're not a fucking bullying, violent piece of shit all the live long day. Violence is a crime. Self-defense is intelligence. You got revolution on one side and you got war on the other. You got presidents on one side. You got kings on the other and you got self-defense on one side and violence on the other. And you got right-wing fascism on one side and left-wing fascism on the other. What clocks fucking right-wing fascism when right-wing fascism says, you know, obey me and they're, you know, going to put violence on some poor unsuspecting victim Leftist fascism fucking checks them motherfuckers. And so you got revolution on one side, war on the other, presidents on one side, kings on the other, self-defense on one side, and violence on the other. Revolution is the only legitimate war that's out here. War is murder, mass murder. War is fucking terrible. That's Violence is a crime. War is a crime. Kings are, you know, <clears throat> tyrannical. They're criminals. War, kings, violence, these are all fucking crimes. But revolutions... Presidents, self-defense, these are fantastic. These are great. The difference between revolution and war is war is just mass murder for the sake of mass murder and some whatever military objective. But revolution is war that's legitimate. A revolutionary war is self-defense, a nation that defends itself, a nation that fights for its independence, a nation you know that fights for its uh, betterment of its people. You know, for uh, peace, land, and bread. Revolution is legitimate war. Presidents are legitimate kings. And self-defense is legitimate violence. You got, you know, fascists on one side. Fucking piece of shit fascists on one side. And you got anti-fascists on the other. So if he's just sitting there like, well, if you're just against fascism, you, you just must be mad about, no, I can exist, motherfucker, without having to, you know, oppress the world. I don't have to oppress the rest of you. Well, I don't have to oppress anybody for the rest of my life. I think you got freedom and love and hope and justice and strength and solidarity and democracy. You got virtue. You got virtue on one side 
and you got a dead fucking cultish sort of sadistic fascist autocracy monarchy ancient regime totalitarian oppressive authoritarian just on the other I feel like when it comes to revolution and war, presidents and kings, self-defense and violence, in some respects, they're two sides of the same coin. You can't just kill for killing's sake, but when people are doing massive killing, you can massively kill them back. You have a right to defend yourself. A nation has a right to defend themselves. Ukraine has a natural right to defend themselves, and the world has a natural right to defend the Ukrainian people with or without state authority. That's state-sponsored terrorism. So in some respects, they're two sides of the same coin. But in other respects, the distinction is crucial. One is good and the other is bad. Revolution is legitimate war. Revolution is legitimate war. Yeah, you gotta do massive, you know, war in order to change society for the betterment of it, their people. You have a bunch of, uh, what, American Revolution was... We're being oppressed by those damn British imperialists. Those fucking red coasts. We want a constitution. We want elections. We want to run our own shit show. We want to run our own shithole country over here. A nation has a right to defend itself. Long live the republic. A nation does not have a right to steal and attack and rape and kill their neighboring nations. A revolution destroys system. Yes, yeah, sure. So do coup d'etats and so do... But it also brings in major changes, which are good. That second part is absolutely goddamn crucial. Just destroying a system, that doesn't usher in a brand new, better one. Well, I destroyed the old system, yeah. So, you know, Iraq war destroyed Iraq. Did that bring, is that a revolution? Did that bring in a better system? Maybe it did, maybe it didn't. Tunisia and Libya, and you have a lot of, you know, regime change countries that we could compare and contrast. Tunisia is doing pretty good. Libya sounds pretty bad. Iraq seems like they got stability now. Now, but at first it wasn't good. Destroying a system doesn't always usher in a brand new, better one. And you don't have to have violent revolutions. You could have peaceful revolutions. You could have elections. You could have a change of leadership. You can have constitutional revolutions, electoral revolutions. And you could have a soft Howard Zinn revolution. Uh, a soft Howard Zinn um, Fred Hampton revolution where you build a system outside the system. So you're either changing the leadership to the game, changing the rules to the game, changing the players to the game, or just changing the whole goddamn game itself. You got presidents on one side, you got kings on the other. You got self-defense on one side, violence on the other. And you got war on one side and revolution on the other. The difference is the difference between good and evil. The difference between legitimate and not legitimate use of force. The thing with being an anti-fascist is you don't go around bullying people for the fuck of bullying them. You know, just for the fuck of it. But if somebody is bullying, you gotta step the fuck up. You gotta step the fuck up. Fuck a fucking bullying piece of shit. Fuck a bully. It's gotta be fair. You know, you can't just fucking bullying violent. You know, I'm gonna hurt you if you don't do as the fuck as... What, if I don't obey you, you're gonna hurt me? How about I fucking... You know, chop off your goddamn... You got presidents on one side and kings on the other. Kings just want to be, you know, obeyed because they were born. <laughs> presidents had to earn their position. Kings ought to be slayed. Presidents ought to be obeyed. English Bob had it exactly the opposite. He was wrong. A ruler's legitimacy is based upon the consent of the governed. A king never asked the people what... They wanted, like an overweight and washed up oppressor, molester, rapist. A king just foist himself upon the people. A president, however, while having the same powers as a king. Once they're elected, they, however, were chosen by the people. The people looked at this person and said, yes, that he presented himself, a good version of himself to the people and won the people over. Now the president gets to rule like a king. Only with the consent of the governed. Fuck a king. Fuck a king. Presidents are majestic. Presidents are democratically republic. Fucking gorgeous constitutional electors. Just a revolution destroys system. Sure, but the major changes that comes in have to be good. We have to have good changes. People want to destroy the system and 
What, not have a constitution, not have a bill of rights, not have ranked choice voting, not have elections? Fuck you. It's like wars when they cut free speech out. That's the difference between Americans and not being Americans. What do you think about free speech? The moment they say, well, sometimes free speech, you gotta... Get the fuck, get that motherfucker out of here. <laughs> like, of course, but uh, as an American, you have a right to speak in general. And that means not just a, a minimal, tiny little bit. You get a whisper to the grass, but you get to sing, you get to yell, you get a whisper, you get to talk, you get to speak. You have the right to speak. You got self-defense on one side and violence on the other. Like in The Karate Kid, you don't learn to fight to hurt other people. You learn to fight in order to stop fights. The Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, they would not never use their powers for wickedness. Self-defense is intelligence. Violence, however, needs its ass kicked. We need to beat the shit out of violence. Fuck a criminal violent motherfucking piece of shit. Other natural laws, besides the right to self-defense and revolution, we have a right to oxygen. As humans, we have a right to food and water, clothing, warmth, and housing. That would be the, what, security, the uh, Maslow Hierarchy 5, the right to speak, the right to bear arms. These are all natural laws. We can get there. A rational man can get there. The right to speak, the right to bear arms, the right to peacefully assemble. We need the right to subpoena, the right to a trial by jury, the right to life, liberty, property, and safety. The right to security. Yeah, these are all natural laws. So you got revolution on one side, war on the other, presidents on one side, kings on the other, self-defense on one side, and violence on the other. The great thing about not being a violent, fascist bully, um, Jordan Peterson, the great thing about not being a fascist, violent bully is you get to enjoy life. You get to smell the roses, tell a joke, enjoy, share information, right? I mean, I feel like that's, that's living. That's living what you have to have power over somebody else. That's the only way you feel like you're living is when you have power over others. I think if, you, if I have power over my situation, over, you know, my food and water supplies and shit like that, and uh, the elements, if I have power to be able to fight, you know, the winds, I don't need power over my fellow man, my, you know, neighbor or family. I don't need power over anybody. I mean, I'm not, as a human, right, I guess we all have some kind of will to power. But ultimately, it's not like the only... In fact, I feel like it's it annoys the shit out of me that some people only respect that fucking bullshit. Oh, this motherfucker, he's just like Gilbert Godfrey, fucking hilarious person. But I think the meek inherit the earth because you, what you, you're fucking with Gilbert Godfrey? Fuck you, you piece of shit. You got revolution on one side and war on the other. And Gilbert Godfrey's a funny motherfucker, so I don't know why you have a problem with Gilbert Godfrey. I don't know how we got here. <laughs> but you got freedom and love and hope and justice, strength, solidarity, democracy, comedy, people that want to make you laugh. 